Hi everyone! Today we're going to learn how to paint this snowman painting that lights up. I didn't want to copy anything I found online, so I decided to do a little sketch on my iPad just to get an idea of what I wanted to paint. So I did two of these paintings at the same time. I'm going to be giving one of them to my mom and one of them to my mother-in-law for Christmas. So as we go through this, you might see clips of each painting and they're pretty close, but some details are a tiny bit different. So that's why they might look different as we go through this. The first thing you see me doing here is prepping my canvas. I am gessoing the sides and the front of the canvas so that the paint sticks better. And even though these are pre-primed canvases, I wanted to make sure there were a lot of layers of gesso and paint on them because I knew I was going to be cutting holes into the canvas to weave the lights through. And I figured the more layers of acrylic and plastic, the stronger the canvas would be and the less likely it would be to rip. So what I did, uh, I went in one direction with the gesso, I just painted up and down as you can see here and I made sure I painted all of the edges. And then I let this layer dry and I turned the canvas 90 degrees and I painted it up and down again. So that way I made sure that I was getting into all the nooks and crannies of the canvas. This ensured that I went in both directions when I turned it 90 degrees. I'm not gonna show you all of that gessoing. It took a few hours between all of the layers for drying. So we're just going to move on to the next step. So here I started to actually apply color to the canvas. I'm using Lucas Studio Acrylics. And what I did to get the sky color, I used ultramarine blue with a tiny bit of sap green because I wanted to tone down the warmth of the ultramarine and give it almost a Prussian blue look. Um, I took the blue paint and the green paint and I mixed in a little bit of glazing medium from Liquitex. And this helped make the paint a little bit more fluid and easier to spread. Now I need you guys to keep in mind that I am not an acrylic painter. This was kind of an experiment for me. I usually work in watercolor. So if you are an acrylic artist, you might be watching this and cringing, and I apologize for that. But this ended up working out, and this is really designed just to be a quick and easy project. This isn't designed to be a piece of fine art. One thing I would change if I was going to do this again, I would be using a bigger brush. This is the biggest acrylic brush that I had. I didn't want to go out and buy another one, so I just made do with what I had. And again, it worked. One thing you're going to want to make sure to do, you can see me doing it here, is apply paint to the edges of the canvas. It'll end up giving your finished piece a more professional look when you're done. Right now I have the speed on this video going at about four times how fast I was actually painting. All I'm doing here is applying paint and letting each layer dry until I'm satisfied with the coverage of the color on the canvas. My goal was to make this look like a night sky. I think I ended up doing about three layers of this ultramarine and sap green mixture until I was satisfied with how it looked. Once my sky was layered and I was happy with how it looked, the next step was to start applying titanium white paint in order to form my hills of snow. Now snow isn't pure white, so I used some ultramarine blue and some yellow to create more dimension with the snow. I tried to keep the tops of the hills a little yellow because I knew I was going to be painting a moon into the night sky and I wanted the snow to look like the moon was reflecting some light onto the surface. And then I used the ultramarine to kind of create shadows and valleys in the snow. Right here, you can actually see how yellow I let the snow get. And once the moon goes in, you actually can see the effect that this yellow paint has 
causing the snow to look like it's glowing. As I was painting this whole piece, but the snow drifts in particular, I was trying to keep in mind that I wanted to paint the thing furthest away first, and then the next hill that was closest, and then the next hill that was even closer. The reason why you're doing this is because as you layer the paint, it becomes more and more difficult to kind of paint around each thing that you're adding. So if you really want a good blend, try to get the pieces done in the back first and then start layering the foreground on top. I found the more that I was layering and the more that I was painting, I wanted a stronger contrast between the yellow glow on the snow and the blue of the shadows. So you can really see me piling the yellow on here. And I just used my brush and I blended it in until I was satisfied with how I thought it was going to look. I'm going to speed the video up again over here. And I just keep layering the blue and the yellow and the white until I'm happy with what I see. And as I was letting each layer dry, I was going back and forth between the two paintings I was working on. As I'm painting, I keep thinking ahead. And the reason why I went so dark with the ultramarine here is because I knew I was going to be painting the snowman in this area. And I knew the snowman was going to be a slightly lighter color of snow. So I wanted to make sure the background he was going to be on was going to provide enough contrast for the snowman to stand out. And right here, I am filling in a little bit of sky. This is what I mean when I say you want to make sure you're done with your background before you move on to the pieces in front. I didn't realize I was going to be painting my snowdrift so low, so I hadn't gone down far enough with my sky. So it was actually a little bit difficult trying to blend the sky to make it match. To paint the moon, I used the top of a mason jar or the ring of a mason jar. And the paint I used was titanium white, cad yellow hue, and a tiny bit of yellow ochre. They were the same yellows that I used in the snow. I tried to use a limited palette just to keep the painting cohesive. To give the moon a little bit of dimension and to make it look a little bit 3D, I tried keeping the right third a lighter shade of yellow and the left top third a darker shade of yellow and just kind of blended it together. I went back after and enhanced it a little bit more. So right here I'm just giving the background snow drift a little bit more contrast with the snow drift in front. I keep adding a few more layers of paint. I want to make sure the tops of the hill have enough yellow to show the glow of the moon. I know I keep saying that, um, but I kind of feel like that's one of the more important parts of this painting. And you want to make sure the bottom of the hills are deep enough blue to show that they're further away from the light and that they're in shadow. And here's this quick scan of the canvas just to show what the hills looked like before I started adding the snowman and the trees. The pine trees, I think, are pretty easy. I'm pretty sure anybody can do this. I used, again, the ultramarine and the sap green colors, but this time I used more green and less blue. And the reason why I chose these colors again is just to keep the look of the painting cohesive and to make sure the trees blend in with the background of the painting by using the same ultramarine and the same green as I used in the sky, it kind of shows that the sky is casting its light onto the trees. And the first layer I did for the trees was just a traditional Christmas tree shape that a kid would draw on a painting. It was nothing fancy, just basically a scribble of trees. It's the next layer that gives them some more depth. So I decided to do two trees on either side of the painting and then a cluster of trees in the middle of the painting. 
The reason why I decided to keep it fairly balanced is because these trees aren't a main focus of the painting. They're just kind of providing a, uh, a placement, a, a setting for my snowman. The snowman and the moon are the focus of the painting. So that's why the moon is all the way to the left and the snowman is going to be um, in the third right of the painting. It's to help your eye travel from one side of the painting to the other. To show the light that the moon would be casting on the trees and to give the trees a little bit more dimension and uh, a 3D look, I used the same yellows that I used in the moon and on the snow in order to highlight some of the branches on the trees. So I made sure I highlighted the sides of the trees that were facing the moon. Don't mind my face really scrunching in over here to get close to the canvas. I wanted to make sure I got close enough I could see what I was doing. I kept adding highlights until I was satisfied with how bright they looked. And then once I was satisfied with the highlights, I took some of the ultramarine and green, and this time I tried to lean a little bit more towards the blue again, and I used that to shade the dark side of the trees, so the side of the trees that were facing away from the moon. And I didn't use a ton. I didn't color in the whole entire side of the tree. I just used it as kind of um, an accent or a low light to show the dimension. At this point, I'm just kind of tweaking the details a little bit, making sure everything's how I want it to look before I throw in the snowman. And I wanted to make sure again that that moon had a little bit of dimension to it and some dark sides and some light sides. And then I also felt like the trees were missing a little bit of highlight. So I did some little slash lines right down the center of the trees. And I think that little tiny bit of paint really made the front branches pop. For the snowman's body, I didn't feel like I had to have a perfect circle for each section. A snowman is made out of snow, we make them by hand, so it doesn't need to be perfectly circular. So I just took my round brush and I sketched in the shape of his body and I made sure that each section got progressively smaller as we reached his head. And I actually um, decided that I didn't like the bottom of his body and I took a wet uh, cloth and I ended up wiping away some of the acrylic paint. I was moving kind of fast because I um, was afraid that if I didn't like his body, I didn't want to have to paint his or paint the snow drifts again. So by moving fast, I was able to wipe away the paint I didn't like. So I'll speed the video up again just so you can see my process as I was trying to decide what I wanted this snowman to look like. I did keep wiping away sections and reapplying paint until I was happy with the general shape. If you look closely, you realize that I didn't put the balls of snow straight up and down like you would see in a traditional snowman or a kid's version of a snowman. I wanted to make sure that the body looked like the behind of the snowman was kind of nestled in the snow because I knew he was going to be looking up at the sky so I wanted him to look like he was leaning back a bit. This is where you can tell I'm going back and forth between my canvases because over here I hadn't added the detail into the trees yet. Um, but for this snowman I thought this version was the best one to show really what my thought process was. I made sure that the back of the snowman or the snowman that was facing away from the moon was in shadow and I used the ultramarine to show that he was in shadow and then the side of the snowman that was facing the moon I again used that yellow um, the uh, cad yellow and a touch of yellow ochre just to show the warmth of the light of the moon hitting the front of the snowman I was really packing on the paint over here so I kept grabbing a wider brush and making sure it was really clean drying it off on my towel and using that to kind of smooth the paint a little bit. 
um, I wasn't looking for necessarily a perfect blend of color. I just didn't want the paint to show a ton of brush strokes. I wanted the snowman to look uh, a little smooth. And I go in a little bit heavy handed here with that yellow again to show that glow of the moon. The birch trees were fun to add in. I used, for the dark side of the trees, I used a touch of raw umber and ultramarine mixed with white. And that enabled me to give the birch trees a shadow side. So I just drew a line straight down the snow to show the trunk. And then to do the little branches, I took a flat brush and um, it wasn't actually perfectly flat. It was actually a little bit bent, I think from how I had stored it, but it worked to my advantage because what I did was I dipped the edge of the, or the tip of the flat brush into the paint. And then I kind of used that to stamp the branches of the tree onto the canvas and I would rotate the brush so that way I wasn't stamping it the same exact way every time and it ended up creating quite a natural looking tree and of course for the branches that were facing the moon I used the same steps but instead of the raw umber and the ultramarine mixed in with white I used the yellows mixed in with white and I stamped the branches that were closer to the moon. And for some reason, I lost the footage of painting the shadows of the trees onto the snow. Um, but just so you know what I did for that, I took a very watered down wash of the ultramarine in white, and I painted um, the shadows of the tree. I kind of followed the angle of the moon to the trunk and I just painted the shadows of the tree in that same direction. And then I did the same thing for the snowman. I followed the angle of the moon to the snowman and I painted the shadow away from the snowman in the same direction. And over here I'm using a tiny bit of red and yellow to make orange for the carrot of his little nose. And I used pure raw umber for his coal eyes and his Cole smile. So the actual painting part of this project was not the difficult part. Um, because I wasn't going for hyper realism or anything like that, I wasn't too worried if I made a mistake. Um, it's just a snowman, some trees and some snow. So please don't feel intimidated by this painting. What was a little bit tricky was figuring out how to get these lights, these fairy lights into the canvas. Um, they are tiny, you can see. So over here, I'm thinking I'm probably going to weave them in. And that's exactly what I did. You can see I took an X-Acto knife. And I cut a little slit into the canvas. And I took the end of the light. And I poked it through. And carefully, very, very carefully, please do not do this too quickly, pulled the lights through the hole that I cut with the X-Acto knife. The reason why you don't want to move too fast when you do this, you don't want the lights to rip the canvas itself. But also, these are very thin wires, and there's only going to be so much bend that these wires are going to have before they snap. So if you do feel the need to bend the wires to get them through the canvas, make sure you're not bending them in the same place more than once, kind of vary the positions where you're going to do it. So once I get the light through or the string through, I cut another slit into the canvas and I weave the lights back through. So you're literally sewing the string of lights through the canvas and you're going to make sure you leave the light bulb piece on the top of the canvas because that's what you want to see when you turn the lights on and you're making sure you leave all of your excess wires between the lights on the back side of the canvas. Make sure you're leaving yourself plenty of time if you're deciding to do this as a gift for somebody. Um, I think it took me four hours just to weave the lights through. Um, 
it took me less time to actually do the painting. So right here, I'm just adjusting the light a little bit. You don't wanna play with it too, too much. Like I said, you don't want those wires to snap. You just wanna do it enough to make sure that um, the wires are in the back and the light is in the front. And after I got the light through and the excess wire in the back, I took a little piece of masking tape and I taped the back of the light um, again, for two reasons. One, so that it doesn't shift once I have it where, positioned where I want it. And also, I thought it would help prevent the canvas from tearing. Um, you don't want those wires moving around once you have them where you want them. Now, because I'm poking holes into the canvas and pulling lights through the fabric, what happens on the front is you can see a little bit of the canvas um, the fibers of the canvas kind of come up through the light. I'm pointing to it right here with my X-Acto knife. And what I did to fix that, I took a little bit of gesso and I um, just cut, went over where the loose threads were to make them kind of stick together so they wouldn't run. And then um, I took some blue paint when I was all done with the lights and I just touched up where the uh, tears of the fabric of the canvas wire. And here it is all done. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions, ask them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. But overall, this is a pretty easy project, not too expensive, and I think a great gift for somebody you know.